Hey guys, welcome back to the car review series. This is the final festival box of the first rotation and after this, every girl will have at least one festival card. The featured cards this time are quite strong, but I think the anniversary boxes are a better choice to use your stars in. Before we begin the car review, I'd like to mention the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. When you're grinding all-stars events on autoplay, there's a lot of downtime you could be using to do something else. Why not use that time to learn something new or improve an existing skill? Skillshare offers thousands of online classes for just about any topic you can think of. February is the month of Valentine's Day, and that also means chocolate. If you ever wanted to make your own chocolate at home but didn't know how, Skillshare has plenty of classes to help you out. A good introductory class is the one called Easy Chocolate Making, All the Basics from Bean to Bar. This short 30-minute class goes through all the fundamental steps of making your own chocolate from selecting beans, grinding them, tempering, and finally packaging. Even if no one gives you chocolate on Valentine's Day, doesn't mean you can't just make your own delicious treats. If you're interested in this class or any other classes on Skillshare, you can try out Skillshare for free. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Let's get on with the car review. The first featured festival you are is Ayumu. Ayumu is a cool attribute car with skill typing and her highest stat is Technique, reaching 7,298 at level 80 in all practice tiles unlocked with no limit increases. Ayumu's card skill increases the total voltage by 25% to 37% of her appeal value. Her passive ability increases the base appeal of Nijigasaki cards by 4% to 5.2%, and her show ability restores stamina equal to 7.5% of her technique value, which is guaranteed to activate whenever an appeal chance is cleared. Ayumu is an offensive skill type card that can also heal you. Normally, when a card tries to do multiple things at once, it doesn't work out too well. But this Ayumu is a bit of an exception. While her skill typing doesn't make her as desirable to use as some of the other top tier cool attribute festival cards, she does benefit from the critical sense bonus, and that extra 15% critical rate does make up for it. That high technique value is also used for her show abilities heals, so a song with a lot of appeal chances would result in a lot of healing as well. Her show ability isn't strong enough to keep you in the green on her own, but it does allow you to use more offensively focused healer cards like Initial Yo, who would normally have trouble keeping green on her own. From an offensive standpoint, Ayumu is similar to the initial UR Maki since they're both cool attribute skill type cards. When calculating the effective appeal of both cards, Maki actually outperforms Ayumu when the critical power is set to the default 150%. However, with the bond board bonuses, it's more likely that the critical power will be at least 180%, at which point Ayumu does a lot better than Maki. Interestingly enough, Ayumu's card skill effectiveness only reaches up to 30 37% instead of the expected 40% that other festival cards with this kind of skill have. This is most likely due to 40% effectiveness being a voltage type exclusive perk. The 3% less voltage gain isn't that big of a deal, but it does make her a weaker card overall because of it. The last thing to note is her passive ability that targets Nijigasaki cards. This makes Ayumu a good partner for cards such as Festival Eye or Karin. However, if you already had Festival Eye and Karin, then this Ayumu isn't really going to cut it on a main strategy. But if you did get her, she would be a good choice for a side strategy support card that can provide appeal boosting as well as the occasional healing. Ayumu is going on the top offensive tier list in A plus tier. She's a strong option for cool attribute main strategies, but her skill typing does hold her back in the long run. She's very dependent on having Nijigasaki cards as well, and while that does limit team building options, this also allows her to be a very powerful side strategy option for any attribute show formation that does have a focus on Nijigasaki cards. But if you don't have many Nijigasaki cards, she won't be doing much except for her costume. The other featured festival you are is Shiriko. Shiriko is a smile attribute car with voltage typing and her highest stat is appeal reaching 7464 at level 80 and all practice tiles unlocked with no limit increases. Shiriko's card skill increases voltage gain from notes of Nijigasaki cards by 8.8% to 10% for 3 notes. Her passive ability increases the base appeal of Nijigasaki cards by 4% to 5.2%, and her show ability increases the total voltage by 10.5% of her appeal value, which is guaranteed to activate when an appeal chance is cleared. 
Chiriko finally has a UR card, and it's a festival card to boot. Her appeal value is no joke, being the 4th highest in the game currently, but she does drop to 6th highest when the next two festival boxes get released. As strong as Chiriko's offensive stats are, her skill set is a bit lacking compared to the other high appeal beatsticks. Her card skill is the less desirable voltage gain from notes, instead of being an appeal boost or a total voltage gainer. I've seen a lot of players asking about the differences between the voltage gain from notes and the appeal boosting skills, and the main difference is that appeal boosts affect everything that is reliant on the appeal value. This includes note taps, card skills, show abilities, as well as SP skill voltage gain. On the other hand, the voltage gain from notes skill only affects, as you would expect from the name, the voltage gain from notes. This means that if a card was already reaching the 50,000 voltage limit from tapping a note, this kind of skill wouldn't do anything, whereas increasing appeal still has benefits for other skills that rely on the appeal value. This pretty much means that Shioriko is the kind of card that is very strong compared to other cards in their base form, but at maximum limit increases, her skill set doesn't provide much. On the other hand, cards like Shizuku and Rina with a total voltage increasing card skill become much more desirable to use due to their card skills allowing them to bypass the 50,000 voltage limit per tap. On the topic of Shizuku and Rina, these two are excellent cards to pair up with Shioriko since Shioriko and Shizuku's passive abilities target Nijigasaki cards, while Rina's passive ability targets Smile cards. This trio would make for the strongest Smile attribute main strategy, at least if keeping healthy wasn't a concern. But it's most likely that you'll only be able to use one of them alongside with Shioriko and a defensive option as your third card on your main strategy. Chiyoriko is strong enough to consider using for other attribute songs as well, as long as you have other Nijigasaki cards to pair her up with. Otherwise, it would be a lot better to use weaker cards with better synergy. Just like Festival Ayumu, she can be used as a side strategy support card for a Nijigasaki main strategy, but she won't be providing much other than the appeal boost since her show ability is rather insignificant. Chiyoriko is going on the top offensive list in S tier, She's the strongest offensive smell attribute card in the game, at least in terms of raw stats. There's no denying her high appeal value, but Festival Honoka is probably better for general team building since she has strategy-based synergy instead of school-based synergy, allowing her to pair up with any card she wants. Also, if you wanted a max limit increase hyper carry for smell attributes, Shizuku would be a lot better, despite having a lower appeal value, since her card skill is just so much better. There's still the SR cards to talk about, and just like the UR cards, they're good but nothing too amazing. The first featured SR is the Yume no Tobira Honoka. Honoka is an elegant attribute card with skill typing, and her highest stat is Technique at 4340. Onika's card skill increases the appeal of cards on the same strategy by 5% to 7% for 5 notes. Her passive ability increases the base technique of cards on the same strategy by 3% to 5%, and her show ability increases the skill activation rate of cards on the same strategy by 7% for 5 notes, which is guaranteed to activate whenever an appeal chance is cleared. This Honoka has over 4,000 appeal and technique, as well as the critical sense bonus, and since her skill set is rather good as well, she's a pretty strong offensive SR card. The main downside is that she is skill type, which usually means not worth using even at maximum limit increases. But since she's elegant attribute and skill type, she's another good filler card for no brand girls when playing that song in DLP at least. The other featured SR is the Analog Heart Rina. Rina is a cool attribute card with SP typing and her highest stat is Appeal at 4340. Rina's card skill increases the SP fill rate of cool attribute cards by 10% to 11.2% for 2 notes. Her passive ability increases her own base appeal by 5% to 7%, and her show ability increases the appeal of all cards by 4% for 5 notes, which is guaranteed to activate the first 4 times the SP skill is used. Aside from the fact that this Rina is the second SR card where her unidolized art isn't covering her face, this Rina also has the highest appeal stat of all cool attribute SR cards, and a pretty good skill set. So if you were looking to invest in a strong SR card for cool attribute, Rina will be quite strong at maximum limit increases. Unfortunately, her card skill is kind of bad though. Even though it does have quite a large value of SP gain increase, she herself cannot benefit from it, though is highly reliant on the other cards on her strategy to try to take advantage of it. 
At the very least, both her abilities are appeal boosters, even if her passive is the greedy kind that only affects herself. There's a lot of stronger SR cards to consider giving maximum limit increases to first, like Snow Halation Katori or the Sorowa Bogotachi no Kiseki Maki. So this Rina would most likely be DLP filler if you did get her. But if you really wanted a strong offensive SR cool attribute card, Rina is your best option. That's the end of the car review. Here's a quick look at all the tier lists. In case you didn't know, I finally finished my All-Stars book. You can download this 600-page PDF by becoming a member of my Patreon and pledging $5. Infinite knowledge of All-Stars could be yours, and it comes with the bonus of feeding me cup ramen. Patreon members also get to watch my car review videos early before their public release. At the end of my car reviews is when I shout out my super special supporters on Patreon. All my SR, SSR, and UR car members are shown on screen. Thank you for your immense support, it makes my heart go doki doki. My final thoughts? This box is mainly going to be for Ayumu and Shioriko fans that want to get their costume. From a team building standpoint, neither Ayumu nor Shioriko are must-haves that will make their life substantially easier. They rely on having a pre-existing roster of Nijigasaki cards to synergize with, so if you don't have many strong Nijigasaki cards, it's really hard to use them to their full potential. For team builders, I recommend waiting for the anniversary box to get a variety of strong festival cards, or the festival box coming next month, which will contain both a very powerful offensive card and a very powerful defensive card. We're also going to see the first party UR get released on the Japanese version this month, so that might be worth saving up for as well, depending on how it turns out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.